Thailand has a good road network. They're not the fast roads that exist in many Western countries, but they do cover the whole territory and are generally in a good state of repair. If you plan to rent a car or a motorbike and make your own itinerary, that can be an excellent choice. Our aim here is to provide a series of useful tips for anyone who is going to do so for the first time, whether it be to get around town or to travel further inland, although it's important to understand that this is not an exhaustive list of do's and don'ts. So before we start, we remind you that it's your obligation to be acquainted with the highway code in any country you intend to drive in. This video is merely the results of the author's own personal experience and has no official approval. The first thing to say is that in Thailand, they drive on the left. So if you're from a country where they drive on the right, it's advisable to rent a car with automatic transmission so you don't have to get used to changing gear with your left hand when so many other things are new to you. The next thing to bear in mind is that it's essential you drive with caution, courtesy and patience. If you lack any of these three conditions, you'd better put someone else behind the wheel. Don't forget to bring an international driving license together with your standard license from home. If anything unforeseen happens, it helps to keep things straightforward and above all, because without an international license, the insurance companies are more likely to turn a deaf ear to their obligations. Apart from the license, it's a good idea to have a GPS sat-nav, because even though the main traffic signs are written in English, you'll appreciate its help on many occasions. Let's start with driving in urban areas. The least recommendable is the capital, Bangkok. It's difficult to get around the city and traffic jams are not uncommon. If you have alternative means, it's best not to take the car. In all other locations, a decent map is enough to find your way around. Thailand is a country of motorcycles. They're everywhere and can appear at any time, coming from any direction. You have to be on the lookout all the time, take extra care and adapt your driving accordingly. They usually carry one or two people on the back, often children, and too often without wearing helmets. This means that any small incident can turn into a dramatic accident. Driving in one lane does not necessarily mean you have right of way in that lane. Motorcycles often switch lanes or come out of side streets and force you to brake to let them in. Make sure you respond politely. You need an international driving license to rent one, and if you finally choose to do so, make sure you keep your insurance details at hand so that you can find them easily in case of need. And never ride a motorcycle without a helmet. When you rent one, check it's in good condition and pay great attention to the state of the rear wheel brake, which is the most frequently used and therefore tends to be more worn. If you are involved in a road incident, try to call the tourist police, who are present in areas of the country with the highest number of visitors. If the matter is serious, once health and safety issues have been dealt with, contact your country's embassy. Always keep the phone numbers of both handy. At road intersections, the right of way is not always clearly marked by the signs. Watch the vehicles ahead of you and negotiate the junction with caution. Most red lights should be taken as a give way when you intend to turn left, i.e. when you turn into the perpendicular road without having to cross over it. Obviously, if it's also a pedestrian crossing, you have to wait your turn. And remember, when we say most traffic lights, that does not mean all of them. There are two possible options when crossing an intersection without traffic lights, when you do not have the right of way. The first is to nip in quickly when a sufficient gap opens up between vehicles. 
The second is to wait patiently for several other drivers to join you in the same place, and when the group gets bigger, they will wedge their way into the flow of traffic, which moves very slowly until finally they manage to stop the ones with the right of way. As a general rule, on the roads of Thailand, size does matter. One more remark about the actual roads. Multi-lane motorways only exist around Bangkok. Main roads have two or more lanes, but they probably do not match the idea you have of a motorway. Other vehicles or animals can pull out in front of you at any time without using an acceleration lane, so if you're driving too fast, you'll crash into them. Seat belts are compulsory on front seats and mobile phones are only permitted with a hands-free device. The slow lane on the left is sometimes used for vehicle parking, especially in front of roadside shops. Do not drink alcohol if you're going to drive. To do so here is very foolhardy. Road signage on many secondary roads is insufficient, which means you have to use all five senses when driving. Avoid any rushes. When you plan your trip, count on an average speed of 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. Normally, to change direction on a highway, they do a U-turn. That means they turn from the fast lane and join the oncoming traffic flow very slowly, crossing both lanes in the process. Overtaking on solid white lines is quite common. Watch out for it and be cautious. Try not to travel at night, it's exhausting. If you can't avoid it, it's not advisable to do more than two hours continuous driving, at least until you've tried it once and confirmed what we're saying to be very true. Small branches and leaves are often placed a few meters back down the relevant lane to indicate an incident. If you suddenly see some, brake gently. During the rainy season, mudslides can damage roads. Monitor the weather forecast for the hours you plan to travel and be prepared as rainwater can mask really big potholes. Drive slowly. <laughs>